Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Well today is the day the Volvo is going on the dyno. So we're here today at Badger 5 to see how much power this car can make on the dyno. So Bill has just arrived, I'm just unloading the car off the trailer now, so we're going to get this in the dyno and see what it can do. Stick around because I think this might be quite an interesting one. Really excited to see how this performs. So car is strapped down on the dyno. We can do one quick run on the old intercooler. So we're not going to waste too much time and then we'll chuck the new intercooler in and compare the data back to back on them. But yeah, first run on the dyno. Hopefully, they'll survive this one. Right then, AP's in the car with Bill. You probably can't hear a thing. First run, here we go. So we've done a couple of quick runs, um, just setting up the dyno. It's running very rich at the moment, so I've leaned it out a tad, and we think the ignition is very safe, which is what we thought anyway, because we've mapped it on the road, we've not had deck cans on it or anything like that, so we kept it quite safe. Nick is now fitting the new bar and plate intercooler, and we'll see if that makes a difference to the inlet temperatures. So that's basically all we can check on, on here, see whether it makes a difference with the inlet temperatures. We're not really going to be comparing power against one another because changes are being made, but hopefully we'll be able to see a drop in inlet temperatures. What did I say the inlet temperatures were? 43? 43. Yeah, they shot up to about 43 degrees on the tube and fin intercooler. And I'll show you, I'll show you the reason why I think that is. And if we look in here, you can see there aren't many fins on the inside of those tubes. Uh, and the more fins means there's more surface area for the air to pass. And that means it will not, well, with a, the with a lack of fins, it won't basically heat soak the intercooler. Um, and then obviously the air passing through cools it. So that, that's how it exchanges the heat. It will heat up the fins on the inside of the intercooler as the air passes through and then the air going through the fans, through the, uh, through the air coming through the front of the vehicle, cools the intercooler and then that's how it cools the charged air that's going through. So as you can see, there aren't many fins in there, which means not much of that exchange could take place. The, uh, before Nick fits it, if we look at the inside of this one, yeah, so you can see there are a lot more fins in there it will cool the air much better, much more rapidly, and hopefully we'll see a drop in inlet temperatures. So that, that might help with the power. Um, but like I say, I've made a few changes, so we can't rely on power runs alone to see the difference. So what we're looking at here is a log from the ECU from the first run and uh, the bit that we want to be looking at is just down here. So you can see inlet air temperatures, it started at the beginning of the run at 25 degrees and it raised to 44 degrees. So that is 19 degrees increase on a single run and this is with the tube and fin. So um, that is at 1.8 bar. So if I just quickly check the map, there you go. So there we go, 284 kPa, which is basically 1.84 bar. So that is the tube and fin run. So if we skip over to 
the bar and plate. So this is the bar and plate run. And again, if I come down here on the bar and plate run, IOTs started at 25 degrees and raised to 32 degrees. So that is a change of seven degrees. And that is hugely better than the tube and fin run. Um, this again is at 284 kPa. So that is 1.84 bar, exactly the same as what we had on the last run. And interestingly, I have one more log to show you. This one here, if I scroll in, you'll see that boost went up to 341. That is 2.4 bar or just over 2.4 bar. And we started slightly lower. Minimum is 24 degrees and it only raised to 30 degrees on a 2.4 bar run, a six degree difference between the two, which is so much more efficient than the tube and fin run. The only reason why this recorded a smaller increase in temperature is because the higher boost meant the car had more power which means that the run was shorter which means that there was less time for the intercooler to heat soak so that's the reason why we had less of an increase in temperature difference so there you go the data shows that the bar and plate was much more efficient than tube and fin um, i will again caveat that and say that these are both about 100 pounds for both the tube and fin and the bar and plate. So these are lower end of the market. I know that there are more efficient tube and fins available if you spend a lot more money, but uh, for us, this is uh, pretty good data. So, so far we've made about seven or eight runs and so far the peak number is 390 horsepower. Um, we've been playing around with it, it's dropped now down to 375 and we're not entirely sure why because we seem to be on similar numbers as we were before. It's my own fault really because I've been making a few changes to the ECU and I haven't actually been saving each time and then trying to go back to what we had before when it made most power um, is obviously difficult. But the car is in one piece still. So I'm quite impressed with that. Um, we've only run about two bar at the minute and um, just over. So I think what we'll do is we'll give it a bit more timing up top because we've not hit any, uh, any knock up the top yet. Um, we did have a little bit down low when boost was ramping in um, but there seems to be a choke problem and I think it is down to the exhaust manifold so fortunately I've been making a manifold on the S4 there's a link to the video up here um, I've bought enough material to make another one for this car for when the new engine goes in because I knew that this manifold would be a bit of a choke point because all we've done is taken the standard manifold and welded a T3 flange to it. It's been said that this manifold can't really flow more than 300-ish, so we're well above that already. Um, so kind of debunk that myth a little bit, but you know, I think that that is the choke point. We're getting about 5,000 RPM, and then it dives off, even though it's holding boost perfectly, um, fueling is good, and there's quite a lot of timing up top, it's just not making any power. In fact, it's just dive bombing down. So you can see what that looks like on here. So this is the 390 horsepower run. It comes up 2.05 bar at the top here with 390 horsepower, 374 uh, pound foot of torque, boost 2.05 bar and AFRs at 12. So everything is 
looking good there but then it just dives off and we've we've brought this up I mean it, it was really dying down and we've added a lot of timing up the top end here to recover a bit more and it's made it a bit better but it's just choking uh, and that's the problem so we can throw a little bit more timing up top a little bit more boost and let's see if we can crack 400 So there we are, 2.45 bar of boost, and we made 415 horsepower. Um, now, we did try and push it a little bit further than that, well I did anyway. Bill didn't seem overly keen on it, but I told him to send it anyway. I was hoping to hit 2.5 bar of boost, but we were let down by the spark plugs. We started to get the spark blowout, but it's fairly late in the day now, so we, we don't really want to be taking plugs out put new plugs in or anything like that. So what we wanted to do, I kind of wanted to just crack the 400 mark because I know that this car can do it, even though it's down on compression on one cylinder, even though it's got the original manifold on there, which is the restriction, even though it's a bus turbo, which I got given for nothing. There's so many things on this which are just put together probably not ideal but I thought it had a 400 number in it so I'm really impressed with this I mean the ECU map myself it's 180 quid I paid for it you know you don't have to spend huge sums of money it did what it needed to do we had a bit of an issue with the boost control it was going all over the place for some reason or other I don't know whether well it can only be a closed loop boost control issue but there have been updates on the ECU since this firmware uh, so that might have been fixed it was just fluctuating a little bit we we ran it on open loop and I just set the duty cycle and just crept the duty cycle up and up and up and then that's when we got spark blowout so it could have made a bit more it's still drivable it's still in one piece it hasn't thrown a piston it hasn't lifted the head which is one of the things I did think if we were started making big boosts it's just got standard head bolts in there probably just patent part from the motor factors whichever ones were cheapest probably and uh, yeah head gasket still intact all rods all pistons still in the car just gonna back it out and stick it on the trailer weather now has gone absolutely terrible compared to the blue skies we had this morning As you can see, um, we didn't bother with any Octane booster because we didn't hit any knock. So we probably had more in the timing. We could have gone a bit further perhaps, but like I say, I want it to be out of here by one. It's quarter past one now. So we're done for the day and um, that's it for this video. So I'm going to wait a week for all the guesses to come in. This video will come out next week once all of the guesses are in. I'm going to keep my lips sealed. I'm not going to tell anyone how much power this thing made today until we reveal the winner of the guessing game and the person who wins some of these stickers. So I best load this up now. All right, guys, so it is Friday the 8th and I can finally reveal the winner. So obviously we got 415 horsepower on the dyno and the closest guess with 411 horsepower was Marios Pantavanos. Now, I hope I've pronounced that right, but you are the lucky winner of some of these stickers. So just a reminder, they are from Ryan. His Instagram account is down here. If you would like to purchase some for yourself, I would thoroughly recommend them. They are very, very cool stickers. But congratulations to Marios. I will be in contact with you before this goes out. Uh, letting you know that you have won yourself some stickers. So uh, Yeah, well done. So before I end this video Thank you to Bill from Badger 5 and thank you for Nick for coming up on the day and uh, 
helping out with a bit of what we're doing, a bit of filming, everything really in general. So thank you very much. Congratulations to Marius and thank you to Ryan Cole for producing the stickers. So if you have liked today's video, please smash the like button. If you haven't already, subscribe. And if you've got any questions, drop them down in the comments below. I do try to answer every single one of you. Till next time, I'll see you later.